Ike Semper VV here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in iHeart, American Forces Radio, Cable Radio Network 2, sportsbyline.com, over-the-air affiliates, podcasting, or maybe you're watching us via Twitch or YouTube. However you're joining me today, I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully, wherever you are, it's sunny outside. If not, hopefully, it's sunny inside your mind. Sad day here on Delmarva. Sad day everywhere in professional wrestling as the industry has lost one of its most creative and interesting people. Longtime wrestler, manager, and booker Kevin Sullivan has passed away at the age of 74 years old. The news was broken by Sullivan's friend and a real friend of pro wrestling, guy by the name of Barry Rose. Sullivan had been in the hospital fighting for his life over the past few months after complications from an emergency surgery. Last month, Sullivan's family announced that he was in intensive care after a devastating accident that happened in May. Sullivan underwent an emergency surgery that saved his leg, but he faced severe complications, including sepsis and encephalitis. A GoFundMe campaign was launched to help with Sullivan's medical expenses. It raised more than $50,000 with significant donations coming from Tony Khan, Jim and Stacey Cornette, Chris Jericho, Scott Demore, Cody Rhodes, Mick Foley, and many, many others. Originally from Boston, Sullivan was a star in the pro wrestling business from the 1970s well into the 1990s. He is best remembered for being an in-ring rival of Dusty Rhodes and for the satanic Prince of Darkness character and the brood that he got together to brawl with Dusty and Black Jack Mulligan in Florida. Sullivan was also a booker in several places, including Championship Wrestling from Florida and later on WCW, WWE, and Triple H. Paul Levesque also issued their condolences as well we'll get some of filthy tom's thoughts on kevin sullivan as well as getting into everything else around the world of professional wrestling including the return of roman reigns tonight on smackdown we'll be back wrestling observer live welcome back to the show mike semper vivi and filthy tom lawler here with you you know we do this show right here for an hour at a time every single day but if you want us 24 7 you can try to find us on twitter slash x I am at Semper VV. Tom is at Filthy Tom Lawler. Brian is at Brian Alvarez. The website is at WONF4W, and the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. Jim Valley is here with you on Saturday, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific. And on Sunday, Andrew Zarian joins you beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 o'clock Pacific. I'd also like it if you made the wrestling news part of your day. Wherever you uh, find your favorite podcast, that's where you can find the wrestling news, or you can go to the wrestlingnews.com and at Wrestling News AV on X and Facebook every single day of the year. Everything you need to know to get your day started, get you up to date, or get you to your favorite long form wrestling review pod like Wrestling Observer Radio. And a new episode of Observer Radio with Dave Meltzer and Garrett Gonzalez will be posted this evening for subscribers of the website. And I'll let you know the many ways that you can become a member of F4WOnline.com later on in the show. Filthy, I have a feeling that when Dave and Garrett get together, a lot of the conversation is going to be about Kevin Sullivan, who unfortunately passed away, I believe it was this morning or it was late last night at the age of 74 years old, a legendary professional wrestler, especially if you grew up in Florida. He was a guy that as the 80s and 90s rolled on and the amount of territory started to shrink, he would be one of those guys that you might catch out there on an independent show. You know, he would go to Hawaii, he would go to ledger connecticut to work for the savoldis i mean you could catch him in a place like that and then he found a a second career almost as a manager uh, with the varsity club and then obviously as a booker as well too most notably for most of the people out here listening wcw in all of your travels especially back uh, in your first stint with mlw did you ever have a chance to run across kevin sullivan yeah, Mike, my initial memories of Kevin Sullivan would have been from something that you did not even mention, and that is the Dungeon of Doom. <clears throat> because well, he was yeah. still around in the mid he was still around in the mid nineties and he was the main event manager. 
sometimes a wrestler, still out there wearing the face paint, devil worshiping, stomping on guys' stomachs. And, uh, you know, he obviously transitioned into a very prominent role backstage, not only in WCW, but in wrestling as a whole. And yes, I did have a chance to run into Kevin Sullivan. And while I wish that my dealings with him would have been greater from everything that I've heard, uh, six years ago in the first ever battle riot at MLW, I eliminated Kevin Sullivan from the very match. Despite the fact he had a spike on him, I was able to use the self-defense techniques I have learned through my years of Brazilian jiu-jitsu training. I apprehended the assailant, and I choked him and eliminated him from the contest. But, yeah, a sad day, obviously. Uh, uh, I haven't seen one bad word about Kevin Sullivan and uh, a lot of great things to say about him. So, R.I.P. Certainly lived a ton of lives. I mean, I can't believe you would bring up the Dungeon of Doom, but you know what? Even he would laugh about that. His job was to line up guys for Hulk Hogan like bowling pins and have Hogan knock them over, and that's what his job was before Can... Eric Bischoff got involved and we got the NWO. Mike, should I get a list of the members of the Dungeon of Doom? One of my all-time favorite stables behind perhaps only... R-O-N-D or Voodoo Murders? I mean, you can, but we would spend an entire segment just talking about what Brutus Beefcake's names were as a member of that. The that Zodiac. Unit. The Butcher. He was the Zodiac. Yeah. Uh, was the Booty Man perhaps part of the Dungeon of Doom at one point? The Lex Man with Luger. no name? The Yeti. <laughs> God. The Shark. Giant Ming, Big Van Vader, Braun the Leprechaun. I'll stop there. I was you did not go with the Loch Ness as a part of that group. King Curtis, Jacqueline. <laughs> Jacqueline, yeah, actually, you know what? Jacqueline and Kevin Sullivan together were a that was quite the combination. And that's the thing about Kevin Sullivan, he lived so many lives and he came up that was. Honestly, more than anything, you could call Kevin Sullivan and ask him about, like, any story. You can ask him about anything, and they, they could be a story that you've heard a million times, and he would tell it entertainingly. But he was around in the 70s and came up in Boston and started out when there were still these little, like, local promoters working for Vince Sr. And he could talk about guys like Abe Ford. He worked in San Francisco with Roy Shire. He worked in Florida with Eddie Graham. He worked underneath some of these great minds. And you could ask him about, like, Leo Garibaldi's booking and things that have, like, passed over time from one booker to another to another and their little twists on it. And he knew all of that stuff. And that's why, to me, you know, as great of a character as he was, I'm really sad over the fact that we lose that knowledge now. And thank God he stayed so progressive. He may not have loved everything about wrestling, but he was at least a guy, Tom, that would still talk about modern wrestling, could still see somebody and see potential. Even if he doesn't love the product, he would find things about it that he would like and that would, you know, interest him. And he always had advice to give and just a really, really nice guy. Did he drop any gems on you? Did you ask him about anything in particular or did you just have a, a nice conversation? There's not a whole lot of time to chit chat when you're getting ready for a 40 man <laughs> weapons true, battle guess. royal, unfortunately. <laughs> so. Well, Dave is going to surely have a lot on Kevin yeah. Sullivan coming up, not only on Wrestling Observer Radio, but certainly in the upcoming newsletter that will uh, be available in full next Friday. That's when those come out. But if you're a member at WrestlingObserver.com, they have been putting out stories that end up in the newsletter during the week, and I can imagine that a big biography is going to make its way to the front page of the site because, again, 
we haven't even scratched the surface on so many things that Kevin Sullivan was a part of. Hey, you know, actually, I got one for you. I'm not sure if you saw this one or not, but it was towards the end of his career because I was at the Great American Bash in Baltimore where it was him and Chris Benoit, and, and there's a lady in the man's bathroom and all that stuff that yeah. took place in the battle for Nancy. But the <laughs> the match a couple years before, it was him and Cactus Jack in Philadelphia at Slamboree against the Nasty Boys. It was awesome. Did you ever have a chance to see that match? It was a Broad Street Bullies match with famed Flyers enforcer David Schultz as the special referee. And there was not a lot of fun about 93 and 94 WCW, but that match was awesome. Did you ever have a chance to see I'll that one? check it out. Oh, yeah, no, that's Mike. one that, again, anybody it's not ringing a bell. Listening, that's a really great one. If you believe me, if you saw it, you would have remembered a great match. But we got a lot coming up on the show, uh, including Roman Reigns returning to SmackDown and a lot of questions about Roman Reigns return to SmackDown. My biggest question of the night is going to be, how injured is Jacob Fatu? Everybody says he's really hurt. It's a matter of how hurt is he? How bad is he? How bad is that walking boot that he's walking in? Is he going to be able to come out of it? We'll find out. We're going to talk to Tom about that. Now that Roman Reigns is going to be making an appearance, does that mean Paul Heyman is too far behind him? What about Tala Tonga, Hikaleo? When will he be making his debut on the roster? That's all going to be coming up. They have not announced a whole lot else for the show. We do have DIY against Pretty Deadly in a number one contenders match. And we'll get into some of the other stuff that they've announced as well. Going to be at the BOK Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Get into that plus a whole lot more when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. Wrestling Observer Live. Big Boss Man will be back on the show on Monday. At least I believe that he will be. I'm sure he'll be around at some point this weekend. If not for with uh, Dave on Wrestling Observer Radio, certainly uh, for the Brian and Vinny show coming up this Sunday. Got to get to Friday first here. Get through Friday first. Smackdown tonight live on Fox. BOK Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. A couple days ago, Wrestling Ticks put out a estimate as far as tickets went. There were about 1,500 remaining. Uh, current setup, 10,263. Certainly going to be very close to sold out tonight. The return of Roman Reigns to the show. He's also been announced for next week's SmackDown at the Kia Center in Orlando, as well as the return of SmackDown to USA Network on September 13th in Seattle. He has been gone off the show since April 5th, the SmackDown prior to WrestleMania. Uh, the show right after WrestleMania saw Tamatanga debut and helped Solo Sokoa beat down Jimmy Uso and kick him out of the bloodline. The Bloodline are the new tag team champions, Tamatanga and Jacob Fatu, but we did see Fatu injure himself, possibly, maybe, allegedly, at SummerSlam. So, filthy. This whole show is revolving around the fact that Roman Reigns is returning tonight. Is Jacob Fatu really injured? Will they hold off Roman Reigns until the very last two minutes and 30 seconds of the show, making everybody wait until then? What do you think's going to go down tonight on SmackDown? This is your show, by the way. Mike, I'm confused. Can we backtrack for a second? Did you, sure. say, did you say SmackDown returns to the USA Network September 13th? Yes. Wow. Yeah. It, it's it's upon us. And it is when does promise. Raw move to Netflix? It is January, because there was that hole there between those last that last quarter of the year. So there was debate over where the show would begin, and I guess it's is it going? Is it starting on Netflix early, or is it staying on USA or something like that? Maybe it's going to Netflix early. I'd have to go back and look at that. But yeah, all of these changes are going to start happening here and here as we get very close, not very close, but as we close in on 2025. Yeah, and there are a lot, a lot of layers that are still yet to be peeled back off of this Bloodline storyline. What are we going to get tonight? 
I assume we get very little in uh, <laughs> some sort of explanation or big movement forward in the storyline. Uh, perhaps we'll find out what the deal is with Jacob Fatu. Although I suspect that if it's a work or not, they could easily just slide all one eye Tonga Loa into the tag title slot and they can reform the Gorillas of Destiny, who they actually called out by name they did. during the run in uh, as they hit a, a double team move on Cody Rhodes. They hit like a double team Tonga twist. And they said, The Gorillas of Destiny are out. So, you know, you could easily just put Tonga Loa and Tama Tonga as the tag champs representing the bloodline. Uh, you mentioned earlier, does Paul Heyman come back here? I think we can hold off. Does Tala Tonga Hikaleo debut here? I think we can hold it off. And there's also other layers to this. What happens when Jimmy Uso returns? Does he come back in the fold with Roman? You've got to assume that he's going to be slotted into this somewhere. Once he's back in the fold, what about Jay Uso? Sure. He's got the main event Jay Uso gimmick character going on. He's running solo on Raw. But you can never separate him completely from the storyline. And in the same token, we have Sami Zayn, who was also formerly a part of the Bloodline. Does he get pulled back into this now that he has seemingly no title to hold him back on Raw? I hard to believe but that when November, I guess we're going to find out. Well, it's hard to believe to me that when November rolls around and Survivor Series takes place, that we're not looking at some sort of scenario where it is, if everybody is healthy, that it wouldn't be Solo Sokoa, Tamatanga, Tongaloa, Hikaleo, or Tala Tonga, and Jacob Fatu against Roman Reigns, Jimmy Uso. Probably Jey Uso, Sami Zayn, and possibly Cody Rhodes. Maybe by that point, Randy Orton would have already turned on Cody Rhodes. Maybe Cody's out, and you have a singles match for the title on that night. But with The Rock still, you know, around with the fact that most of this or all of this is going to lead into next year in a Roman uh, rock match and, and probably a Cody Rhodes rock match at WrestleMania. I mean, I, you know, it, it's hard for me to believe that by that point, we won't have everything figured out. It's really interesting to see where Paul Heyman lies in all of this, because I think people, fans would want him to be with Roman. They've played out the story where he was brutalized by Solo. He was brutalized by the Tongans. So it makes sense that he would be with Roman and would be with Jimmy and, and back with them. But the problem is they need a mouthpiece. And Solo's not that guy. Jacob Fatu, for as great as he is, isn't a promo guy. At least we, we don't think that he is yet. Tamatanga cuts a decent promo but not enough of one. So that's where I would think that Paul Heyman, if he's going to be back, that would be one of the reasons, the main reason to me that I would put him with Solo. What do you think? I think you bring back the one man that can control all of these Tongans. He's proven it in the past. You got to bring in Giotto. Get I thought you were going stick. to go with Armando Alejandro Estrada, uh, the former manager of Umaga. They might, they might as well bring in uh, El Fantasmo and just give him the mic <laughs> and he can reform his, his portion of the bloodline with his family. He needs a friend. That's a, this whole G1 climax that's going on in New Japan right now. Uh, it is still El Fantasmo competing in this thing, upset that all of his Tongan friends have left him. And Jado is still with him, even though he keeps losing matches. So, yeah, we'll get to that possibly maybe a little bit later on. But 
will continue to move on here, including some people that may be in WWE relatively soon. Amid swirling rumors that he and his brother are headed to WWE, current AEW star Ray Phoenix has pulled out of a September indie appearance due to what is being called personal circumstances. You ever have to pull out of a show due to personal circumstances, Tom? Can't say I have. This was posted up to the front page of the site earlier on by our man Josh Nason. El Paso, Texas-based New Era Wrestling had booked Phoenix for a three-way with Dostin, not Dotson, the form <laughs> would have turned into Nissan at some point, and Aries for Friday, September 27th. Late Thursday night, the promotion then released the following statement. Ray Phoenix will be unable to participate in our Lucha Libre event due to personal circumstances. We apologize for any inconvenience that this may cause, as it is beyond our control. News broke last week that it is expected that Phoenix and Penta El Zero Miedo are expected to leave AEW with our very own Brian Alvarez, including saying it on this show that there is internal belief within WWE that they are headed there. They were reportedly slated to compete for the AEW trios titles at All In, but that plan was taken off the table. Lucha Libre Online reported back in June that Penta's contract was set to expire between August and September of this year, while Fightful reported last week that Phoenix's contract was also coming up at some point this year. His last AEW match was on July 20th on Collision when he teamed with Penta and Pac, or he also then teamed with Penta and Pac a week later at a CMLL event. Also, Ricky Starks, I have not seen this week's newsletter yet, but apparently Dave wrote about the fact that Ricky Starks is expected to sign with WWE once his contract in AEW expires. And I don't think, Tom, that that is too much of a shock to anybody, is it? No, I think people have been expecting this essentially since the time that Cody Rhodes moved over to WWE. Uh, and, you know, it's probably a good move for both parties. I think it is, too. It's going to be interesting to see if Stark starts on the main roster. You know, you did have Arn Anderson, you know, and, and granted, that was part of leaning into Kevin Owens and Randy Orton and Roman Reigns being there at the show at SummerSlam, but he did mention the fact that he's got friends and he's going to have some friends on the way. I don't see him stopping off in uh, – he, he could – it would be great for NXT if he did, but unlike Sean Spears, unlike Ethan Page, I could see Ricky Starks debuting right on the main roster. I mean, what do, what do you think about that? Yeah, I could see him coming in as, you know, I don't want to use the term lackey, but for, you know, basically as Cody's second in a lot of ways. He could be the guy that's there hanging around in the mid card, top of the card, but losing when he has to to set up Cody's opponents and hey that's really not a bad spot to be in whatsoever um I could see Fenix and Penta on the main roster as well and there's other people uh NXT is going to need some names sitting in the crowd and there's no shortage no shortage of wrestlers in AEW L.A. Knight is going to hold a United States title celebration, and Andrade and Santos Escobar will face off to be number one contender for the U.S. title also tonight on SmackDown. We'll get into some more stuff when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back to the show. Mike Sempervivi and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. Wrestling Observer Live. You know, you can become a member at WrestlingObserver.com. $14.99 gets you everything that the site has to offer, including the incredible archives of audio and all the back issues of the newsletters, plus a ton of site-exclusive features, including podcasts and other content. Twitch offers one free subscription as part of their Twitch Prime, so you can use that on us. Go to twitch.tv slash F4W video. Hit subscribe. It'll ask you if you want to use Amazon Prime. Say yes. Wrestling Observer Live, Brian and Vinny, Figure Four Daily, and more. If you only want video live and on demand through YouTube, you can do that as well. It's $9.99. And select podcasts are also available through iTunes at $9.99 as well. For more information on all of that stuff, you can head on over to WrestlingObserver.com. 
at some point this evening, a brand new Adam and Mike Big Audio Nightmare will be posted up for fans of Japanese professional wrestling. I have gone through, I have watched every single G1 match in Filthy. Um, there have been some highs, there have been some lows, but there for sure has been way, way too much Jake Lee. Way too much Jake Lee and House of Torture. I have a soft spot in my heart for the old House of Torture, especially my boy Evil, who I'm a big, big fan of. But Jake Lee stinks. Terrible. Terrible. And Jake Lee's got talent, too. It's just he's... if he, I'm not even going to get into it right now. I'll save that for the end of my big audio nightmare coming up a little bit later on. We've got two days left of the B block and one day left of the A block. It's a little bit easier to figure out what's going to be happening in the A block. Zack Sabre Jr. has already qualified to go to the playoff. Uh, Evil, uh, Tetsuya Naito, both tied with 10 points. Sonata, Shingo, and Great Okan are still in play as they go into their last night on August 12th. Can we get Oka? Can we get Great Okan moving through? That is my biggest hope here in this tournament. It's possible. The problem is he needs to beat Naito, and if Naito loses to Okan, then Naito is out completely. And he's taken some L's, but can you imagine a scenario that where six people make it into the playoff round of the G1, that the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion as... I don't want to say broken down or washed because people don't like those terms, but as faded as Tetsuya Naito may be, can you imagine a scenario he doesn't make it into the playoffs? Well, he better watch out. What if Okan slaps on that claw, pops his eye out of his head? He's already had plenty of issues with his vision. You never know what could happen. Hope Maybe the silencer will take out Tetsuya Naito. That's my big hope. You know, the more serious Okan has actually been a, a plus in this tournament. I think David Finley has been really good in this tournament. Oleg Bolton, Bolton Oleg, got the new gear, got the uh, the Kazakhstan flag uh, color set up and all that sort of stuff. He looks really good as well, too. Again, there have been some, some pros and cons to this, but obviously it's a transition year. And what do you think about the fact that we do have six people going into the finals? Because in all of sports... We've seen NASCAR institute a playoff. We've seen Major League Baseball expand their playoffs. We've seen the NFL. I mean, the NBA's got in-series and tournaments now as well as what they've done with their playoffs. We've seen playoffs expand. It just seems to be a regular thing in sports. Do you like this for the G1? I thought of all years, this was the time to do it because you are in a transition year. Go ahead, throw it at the wall, see if it works or not. And you can bring in more drama and more storylines to it because you have more people involved, like with possibly coming up here with Naito at the end. But do you like this format and how they're doing things where number two and three in the block will have to face each other to move on to face whoever wins the block, then move on to the finals? Or is it too much for you? Well, Mike, they have over the past, I believe, at least five years changed the format every single year. For the yeah, G1. they had four blocks when, at one point with a bunch. Yeah, of guys. that's yeah. when I was when I did it a few years ago in twenty. What would that have been? Twenty twenty two. It was four blocks. Last year, I believe it was two blocks, with four men moving through. This time, it's two blocks with six men going forward, which does add quite a bit of intrigue. Of course, you're probably right in the fact that Naito moves on to the uh the next round here um of the g1 but then what happens does he lose in the in the second and third match to move on does he win there and then lose to the b block winner to set up a future title defense you know and and that's just talking about what could happen with one guy you know, there's four gentlemen that will be in this predicament. So I think it does add quite a bit of intrigue in the long run for booking for the rest of the year. And there are title matches set up if they want to do them because Naito's lost to Zack Sabre Jr. He's lost to Shingo. He's lost to Evil. So 
there could be some time here before we get to, to January 4th and ultimately what, what shakes out and who ends up challenging him if he is the champion by then, which I would assume he probably still is. One guy that has stood out incredibly in this tournament has been Konosuke Takeshita. And I'll use that as my way to pivot back to AEW, but he has been arguably the best wrestler in the entire tournament, arguably has had the most uh, matches of the night. He has had a great run during the thing. AEW is tonight on uh, Rampage, TNT, Matches taped on Wednesday in Winston, Winston-Salem. Winston No spoilers here, as if you need any. Darby Allen against The Butcher. Rocky Romero against Wheeler Yuta, who will be going on to face Swerve Strickland on next Wednesday's Dynamite. So, I don't know, Rocky. Good luck here. Private Party against The Dawson Brothers. And Soraya against Nyla Rose. AEW Collision is Saturday night on TNT, live from the Esports Center in Arlington, Texas. Texas Bull Rope match. Thunder Rosa against Deanna Perrazzo. I've liked this little feud. Is It is what it is. I'm sure, obviously, last week nobody saw it since 189,000 people or whatever it was saw Collision. But I have enjoyed this little battle back and forth between these two. World Trios title number one contenders match with Christian Cage as the special guest referee, the House of Black, Brody King, Buddy Matthews, and Malachi Black against the Bang Bang Gang of the Gun Brothers and Juice Robinson. Tom, that match is going to end in a no contest, and we're going to have a triangle match at All In. Am I crazy for thinking that? That is my initial thought, too, once you mentioned it. What is the reason for Christian Cage being the guest referee other than that? Other than to screw somebody? Well, the match needed a father, obviously. You know, one of the underrated lines that has come across was, I believe it was Austin Gunn that said that uh, Shayna Wayne uh, looked like the stepmom from a Brazzers movie. Do you, uh, do you have any thoughts on that comment? None smart man you are you are a very very smart man but yes uh the house of black to me that would make that match more exciting anyway to be honest with you you might as well have a, tri a triangle match you... for the trios championship yes oh okay oh, i thought you, I, thought I, you thought, thought of line I was what i was like what do you uh what do you mean is gonna make the match more exciting Hopefully it's only guns up for Mike. <laughs> it's like, honestly, again, a three wave of those teams, you know, being out of control at an all in show, maybe to open the show or something like that. I actually, I like that idea. We'll see what they ultimately end up doing here. Everyone's favorite television ratings. The numbers are in for last Wednesday's dynamite. We didn't get a chance to do these yesterday. They came in too late for yesterday's observer live, but uh, 622 thousand people on average a 0.19 in the 18 to 49 year old demographic or about 257,000 of them on average both numbers are up slightly from last week they had a 50 percent drop in males 18 to 34 so i don't know what was on where that group dropped from 64,000 to 32,000 hold on tom hold on Whatever got them excited, the olds were not about because they made out. They had a nearly 50% increase in men 35 to 49 and a 35% increase in women 35 to 49. Is that just a matter of the olds not wanting to watch Olympic wrestling and having probably some Olympic fatigue? I believe the younger, the younger viewers uh, who were, who were previously doing a hit to the AEW ratings, the younger viewers, all the viewers who are watching the WNBA, basically. Oh, geez, really? uh, the young, the younger portion, yeah, I believe the younger portion switched over to the Olympics and the older viewers went to AEW. The older viewers didn't want to watch Olympic breakdancing. They wanted to watch a little of their own in, well, in the AEW listen, rooms. Mike, Mike, don't denigrate the sport like that. It's Olympic breaking which actually began today. It is one of the core elements of hip hop. You of all people should know that. Well, hold on. Did, did they lay down a third line that, that no one could touch? Like at the, the end of beat street, you know, you can't, can't touch the third rail. Remember that? You don't remember that. Do you educate yourself? My friend, I'm read old. a book. Which one? 
hip hop book. Nelson George, authored by him. I don't know. Yeah. Did you ever break dance back in the day? You're too young for break dance. Look at me. Look at me. Yeah, but look, you no, I I've seen a any... lot of incarnations of you. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen old no. photography. You had some lines cut in your head at some point. Did no, you do but I, you... my son, actually, I do take my son to break dance lessons, lessons, actually. He goes to a break dancing school. Good for the core strength? He stinks. He's like the Jake. He's like the Jake Lee of break dancing. <laughs> Is he having except, a good time ex- though? At least, except he's only been doing it for a short time. Jake Lee has been a professional for years. <laughs> oh, so he's been doing it for like a month. <laughs> well, you know, if Jake Lee ever did come to AEW, or even your son, you know, I can see him being in shape. I can't see him being a a, a huge man uh, where people would chant meat mayhem at them but aew has trademarked meat mayhem yes it was a terrible transition to get into this but the application was filed on august 8th and is listed as covering anything related to the marketing of pro wrestling yes aew now owns the term meat mayhem at revolution earlier this year aew had planned to have the first ever meat madness match but the match was postponed and an all-star scramble instead took place. The postponement was because some of the wrestlers Tony Khan wanted to use in Meet Madness were not available. Khan said that when there was enough healthy depth, he wanted to still present Meet Madness, starting with Miro against Powerhouse Hobbs at All Out 2023. Fans have chanted Meet during AEW's big man matches. Miro and Keith Lee were two of the wrestlers Khan wanted to have in Meet Madness when it was scheduled for Revolution. Both are still out of action. Filthy, if called, would you serve in a Meet Madness match? It might take a little bit of time to bulk up is the issue. What are the, you know, what are the rules here? Do you have to be over a certain BMI does your body fat percentage have to be almost in the triple digits? What are we talking here? How does this work? I don't know if I quite qualify for meat madness. Don't have the whip for it, eh? Mm. We'll ponder that thought, as well as many others, during this break. Our last one before we come back here on Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you to put a bow on this episode. Thank God for that, huh? Big Boss Man Brian Alvarez will be back on this show coming up Monday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. I believe Jim Valley will be taking the day off. So if you love this show and you've heard it once and you want to hear it again, well, you can do so every single day, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific, across many of these same Sports Byline Broadcasting Network radio affiliates. And then tomorrow, in place of Jim, you will hear this show one more time. Filthy, number one contenders match for the strong openweight tag team titles has been added to Capital Collision, where you and Fred Rosser will be doing battle against Jarrell Nelson and Royce Isaacs. But Shane Haste, Mikey Nichols are the champions right now. Robbie Eagles and Bad Dude Tito, Hiroshi Tanahashi and Tomohiro Ishii, and the Grizzled Young Veterans will be battling it out on that show. Any thoughts about handicapping that match for us? I mean, they're all handicapped if they get in the ring with me because I'm going to take them out one by one. That's why I'm not in that match. The scared. The, president, the president's scared. Mm-hmm. Of old dirty work, Fred Rosser and Tom Waller. They're all yeah, scared, just, Mike. I'm scared. You, you should be scared about what you're going to do to these people. In fact, you should go out there and beat up Hesheseiro and Virus anyway during the Haste, Mikey, uh, Haste and Nichols match. That's who they're defending their titles against that night. After you and Fred beat up on Nelson and Isaacs, go ahead and beat up on everybody else in that division and then make a challenge to the Grizzled Young Veterans because i got to be honest with you, that's a match I'd like to see you and Fred against them. That might be fun. Hey, I'd like to see any match that involves me in the Lions Mark ring or any other ring out there or a cage, which you can catch me beating up all Paul Walter Hauser tomorrow night on MLW in a cage fight, Mike. So I'm going to go get ready for that. 
and I bid you adieu. Mesh that man through that cage. I want to thank you for joining me today, Filthy. Thank you, Producer John. Thank you, Producer Daniel. Thank you all about all of you out there for watching and listening. We shall talk to you again after a while.